Team. We're a Agape Community Fellowship under the leadership of our overseer, Apostle Ken Smith. And we are so honored to be able to share the word uh, with you this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you uh, because you're God all by yourself. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing on our lives, Father. Thank you, Lord, that you have a purpose for us. And we thank you, Lord, that your purpose will be fulfilled. It will not be aborted. It will be fulfilled as we submit to your will and to your ways. Father, we pray, Lord, that your word will go into good soil of our hearts today. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, it will bring forth much fruit, Father, and that as the, your people go out and as I go out from here, God, and share the word, what you have said, it will bring forth more fruit. So we thank you for multiplication, multiplication this morning of the word, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 I, I'm so honored to be with you this morning, and, and the Lord gave me a word for you, and so I want to share with you. And the word was that Jesus deeply loves his bride, the church. Amen. He deeply loves her. Uh, his, his bride, that's us, isn't it? Amen. It says that we are being what? Perfected, made holy through the what? Washing of the word. That's why the enemy tries to steal the word from you. Because he knows that the more that you get of the word, the sweeter your spirit becomes. The more anointed you come, the more liberated you come in the spirit. And so that's why some of you are saying, I have a hard time reading the word. You know, I spend so much time, I don't get anything out of it. It's a demonic attack. Amen. Purpose to take you from the presence of God. Don't let it happen. Don't Amen. let it happen. Amen. Bind the enemy with praise. Amen. With praise. Just begin to praise God. Amen. We sing all those songs about, we're going to bind the enemy with praise. We're going to take the land. Well, let's get up and do it. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. He is determined, Jesus is, is determined that we, he will be able to present to himself, us, as a glory. As a glory, as a radiant glory. We are going to radiate his presence. We're going to show forth the glory of God. Just like we're supposed to do it here in this earth uh, world. People around us should feel there's something different about us. When we come into the room, they need to feel the Holy Ghost. They may not know what it is, but they'll say, oh, something came in here. Amen? Because we know when an evil spirit comes in, don't you? Amen. When that thing comes into your, your space or into your home or whatever, you know somebody brought this in. Amen? Amen. It makes you go, want to go to the door, and I have done it. I went to the door, and I said, get out of here, devil, in Jesus' name. And I don't care who brought it in, it's out of here, in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen? Because we have to go back and take our authority. Amen? Amen. And so in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 2, uh, Paul reminds us that we were promised to one husband. One husband. And who is that? Christ. Christ. We can't be double-minded in this. Amen? We can't uh, uh, worship God and, and worship the enemy at the same time. Amen? Uh, so he's, he's, he has done this so that he might present uh, us as a virgin. Why? Because he's renewing us. Amen? He's healing us uh, that he may present to himself a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Amen? So the more I get into God's word, the more wrinkles come out. Amen? Uh, the wrinkles, if I have wrinkles in my face that I may be hiding this morning, the closer I get to Jesus, I expect the wrinkles to come out. Forget plastic surgery. Amen? <laughs> wrinkles. Wrinkles, because he's going to present us what? Without spot or wrinkle. And just, you know, Amen. I know I'm being silly because we're going to have a new body. Amen? Amen. Amen? Yes, a new body. Everything's going to pass away. All things are become new. Uh, we are the sons of God, 1 John 3, 2 tells us. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he appears... We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. I, I, that scripture so ex, ex, uh, excites me. But first it calls me beloved. Amen? Because I am beloved by Christ. You Amen. are beloved by Jesus this morning. I don't care if nobody told you that you were loved. Jesus loves you. Amen. His love is perfect. His love is clean. His love does not deceive, church. Amen. And so you can trust him. Some of you are going through things right now. Can I tell you, just hold on. 
Stand in your position because this is not the end of your story. There is more to come. The purpose of God will be fulfilled if you hold on. Amen. If you hold on. You hold on. Don't run away. Hold on. Uh, Revelations uh, 5 verse 20 says, uh, talks about uh, what's going to happen. Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to him. For the wedding of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. I can't wait for that meal. Amen. I can't wait for that meal. You know, sometimes you get so excited. Well, I have. I've gotten so excited. And the food looked good, but I just couldn't eat. I was just so excited. I, I don't know what's going to happen at that, at, that, at that marriage supper. But it's a marriage supper, and it's set for me. I may eat or I may not. I may be so excited. I'm just dancing around the kingdom saying, I made it. I made it. I made it. I made it. The enemy tried to keep me out, but I made it. I made it. I made it. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. And it says the angels are rejoicing. Amen? Amen. I am rejoicing in God because that's his plan. That's his purpose for us. It's an absolute deal in the future. Amen? We're Amen. looking forward. Are you looking forward to the coming of the Lord? Amen. As I see all this stuff that's happening in the world today, I say, oh, we're getting closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. And he's only delaying his coming so that many more can come to Amen. him. There is an appointed time that he has, he has called for it. And he's called us during this time to do what? Be intercessors. Be intercessors. Amen. Be Jesus in the world. Amen? Amen. I was, uh, a few weeks ago, I was, the Lord gave me a picture of the stealth plane. I know many of you have seen the, uh, or heard about the stealth bombers. I went to the airport one time, military airport, and I said, that's the stealth. That's the stealth. That's that bomber, that plane that goes up so high, nobody can see it. Nobody can see it. God has called us at times to go up in the spirit, to do a job, to bring down the enemy. Nobody's going to see you because you're on a mission. Amen. But don't think you did it by yourself. Because on the ground, there are forces that are calling everything into position. The bomber has his job to hit the target, Amen. but there are, uh, in the military, there are the, the Navy and uh, sitting there, and they are telling him exactly where to hit it. Amen. He can't, the bomber can't hit unless he's given instructions. Amen. The Holy Ghost will give you instructions so you can hit the target, amen? amen? And so God wants us to be able to hit the target, go home and say, praise God. Amen. Job done, amen? Amen. Amen. It's time Amen. for us to be precise in what we do. Amen. In, in this, in our walk in the spirit. Amen? Amen. It's not important for people to see us like they don't see that bomber. See Jesus. They will know that something hit them because they will come to know the Lord as their Savior. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And so the Lord gave me a specific word. I need to move over here from the, the message this morning directly. And there was a word the Lord gave me, but let me read you the scripture first. 2 Corinthians 6, uh, verse 14 through 16. <clears throat> and, I, uh, and so this is, I think this is from the Amplified. It says, don't con continue to team up with unbelievers in mis mismatched alliances Amen. for what partnership is there between righteousness and and rebellion. What the Lord is saying to us, don't be unequally yoked with the unbelievers. Amen. Who can mingle light with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and Satan? You can't have a little bit of Jesus and a whole lot of the devil. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? Oh, that, that person, they're my best friend. Uh, they're my intimate friend and all of that. They're getting a little bit too close. Because Jesus is the one that should be close to you. Amen. And Christian believers who are walking in the same path are the ones that are called into that place of intimacy with you. Knowing that one can put a thousand to flight, two ten thousand to flight. If I'm yoked up with an unbeliever, that unbeliever can't help me put it to flight, put the enemy to flight. He has no power because when I came to Jesus and you came to Jesus, he gave you the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. He gave you all power, all power, all power. What he did, he said, greater works would we do. 
Some of you are waiting for the preacher to do it. God said, I gave it to the church. I gave it to my Amen. people. Amen. He's calling for us to move out in it right now. Amen? And so what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What friendship does God's temple have with demons? Our bodies. Our bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Amen. So why are we entertaining demons? Amen? Amen. Amen? When the enemy comes to you with some stuff and you know it ain't God, you say, you better get out of here. Get out of here. I don't even want to hear it. Did God say it? That's what I say at 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning when the enemy comes because he knows I'm so vulnerable because I'm tired or whatever. And he comes to tell me something that God didn't say. I have one question for him. Did God say it? Amen. Because the Bible says if you will resist the devil, he will flee. I am a witness. God didn't say it, so the enemy shuts it down. Amen? So I want to encourage you to do the very same thing. If God didn't say it, don't believe it. No matter what it looks like, if God didn't say it, let it go. What friendship does the temple of God have with demons? For indeed, we are the temples of the living God. Don't repeat it. Just as God said, I will make my home in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. So he's called us to do what? To holiness, holiness. He said, remind them during this time, uh, during uh, this, the time that we've gone through, uh, especially during that pandemic and, and, other t uh, and uh, uh, the, the attacks on the economy, the attacks on everything, there has been a mingling of spiritual things with demonic and unclean spirits. Amen? Amen? Because what, they, what you're trying to do is get, get an answer from God through the enemy. Through the enemy, using ungodly sources that God did not tell you Amen. where you were supposed to go to. Amen. You know, he said, I'm going to give the wealth of the of the wicked to you. He's going to give it to us anyway. So why would you go out there and make a deal with the devil? Amen. Amen? It's important for us to be directed by the Spirit. So the Lord said to me to tell the church this morning, be aware that there are creeps that would want to deceive them. Creeps. Creep just comes in. He looks so good, doesn't he? Sometimes you don't even know when they got in. You don't know when they're coming because they're disguised. Uh, they're impersonators. They put on airs. They say, come to he, I know, like you do. Uh, but they will betray you just as Judas betrayed Jesus. They'll look like, but they're not. They're like those tares that Jesus spoke about, that in the body there are the wheat and the tares. And we've said, well, Lord, won't you take care of the tares? He said, no, it's not a season for that because if I do that, some of the wheat will get discouraged and be destroyed. Amen? Amen. Because you will, so some of you will go into self-pity of saying, oh, look what God's doing to them. That wasn't fair. So God said, let them grow up together. I'm going to separate them. In the right time, I will separate them. Amen? Amen. And so the Lord says, uh, remind you that they're going to try to betray you just as Judas did Jesus. They, they, uh, themselves, they come to be borders. Uh, with the intention of being owners. You ever had somebody come into your house and they just said, well, I'm just going to come and stay for a few days? Anybody ever had that? I can tell you about them kind of people. That's why we say, no, no, no. No, no, no. We can tell you all the motels, all the hotels in the area, but if God didn't say it, we say no because we have had personal experience. Amen? Amen. We have had people come in just to stay for a few days, those travelers, I call them, you know, that didn't make a, a reservation at a hotel. And they, because they already purposed to come in and take over your house. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. You, you're going to be serving them, taking care of them while they're talking, talking trash to you. Amen? You are going to get up and you're going to fix breakfast for them or have breakfast ordered for them and it won't be good enough. And whatever you do in your house, it ain't good enough. They will go through your your, your whole being and criticize everything in your house. Can I tell you what I tell them? Get out. Get out. This ain't your house. Don't do it at your house. Amen? Amen. Think because they have creeped in. They creeped into not where they were supposed Amen. to be. Amen? God has given you your home, your cars, everything. Don't let the enemy criticize it. It's, uh, let me tell you, give you another example. God gives you a new car. Your neighbor down the street gets a new car, and you look and say, look at his car. 
is prettier than mine. What? Are you crazy? God gave you this car. You don't know what that neighbor's going to have to go through to pay that note. God may have, have given you that car and there was no note. I'm a witness. I've seen God do it. I have seen God do it uh, for me. Don't you remember that, Pastor Wade? Yes, I told you. We were wait, I was waiting and waiting. And the check came in the mail. Well, the day that I was so discouraged, my mother said, so-and-so wants to talk to you. I said, I won't talk to anybody. She says, you need to come to the phone. I went to the phone, and he, and he said, um, I'm sending you a check. Go buy your car. Because he, he just had just sold some property. I didn't expect it. I didn't know what. I just, just, it just floored me. Amen. I had to bow my head and say, I'm sorry, Jesus. I was so discouraged. I stopped trusting you. I was thinking some bad things about you because it was being delayed. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Amen. Man, we come to that place that we uh, become more like enemies of God instead of on the same team. Amen? Amen. Our spirits don't allow the enemy to bring that in. Amen? So let me get back to what the Lord told me to tell you. The enemy comes camouflage. Uh, the spirit that they bring in is what? confusion and every ungodly work. The word says where there is confusion, every ungodly work can possibly happen. So you let them in. Don't be surprised with what they do. Amen. This is not just in your homes. This is in, in, in all of your beings, in your relationships, everything. Watch what goes on around you. Uh, if it's going on in a, a, a situation or whatever, that you can just ease yourself out of that, say, I gotta go. I gotta go. Uh, this was good, but I gotta go. Amen? Amen. Obey the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? You do not have to entertain devils. And if the Lord won't let you go and you have to stay there for a reason, you say, well, I know he must want me to intercede. And so I start praying for the souls. I start praying for the people around me that need Jesus. Compassionately, God, don't let them be lost. Don't let them go into eternity without you. Amen. You know, sooner or later, they're going to say, you know, I think we should do something else. Why? Because it's something uncomfortable happening. Amen? Amen? Because the Holy Spirit in you is supposed to make a difference. Amen? Amen. They're either going to love you or kick you out. And I don't have a problem with the devil kicking me out because I want to go anyway. Amen? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So it brings confusion. Uh, it's smooth. And, and, and how it got in, it's like, how did he get in here? Some of you have midnight callers. And your, your midnight be, may be the uh, middle of the day or it may be in the morning uh, that, uh, that are looking for a temporary place just to lay their head. Just a temporary place. Now, some of you, you know you got that collar at night. I'm not going to say it, but you know what it is, that B collar at night. You'll have no purpose but to come in and to, mm -hmm, and to do what? They ain't going to stay till the morning. They're gone because they got what they wanted. Amen. When daybreak comes, they're gone. Amen? That's their nature. That's the nature of the enemy. And you say, how come they just didn't stay the night? Wasn't I good or what? He wasn't supposed to come in the first place. Or she wasn't supposed to come in the first place. Amen? You open the door to the devil. Amen? Um, because what, what happens is that if it stays too long, that spirit stays too long, it knows that you're going to recognize it for what it is. You're going to recognize it as a deceiver, a liar, a user, oh, a thief. The enemy comes to do what? Rob, steal, kill, and destroy. So this thing that you allowed in your house has come to destroy the spirit of God that lives on the inside of you. Amen? And so instead of being able to praise God and worship God, you're sitting over there in shame and guilt. God didn't bring you no shame. God didn't bring you no shame. He brought you, God brings you repentance. Come to the cross. Get it right. Amen? Because if we for, uh, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? Forgive us of some of our sins. All of our sins. Amen? And I want to remind people that think that, they're, that we're just so spiritual. We're so spiritual it wouldn't happen to us. Can I tell you the Bible says, take heed of yourself. Take heed of yourself. Take heed of yourself. It's the same devil. The devil knows what would entrap you. He knows just what, just what fruit to put in front of you that might make you say, oh, or begin to think about it. Amen? Amen. And like Eve looking at that 
fruit in the garden. She looked at it, looked like it was good for food, even though God said don't do it. Amen. And she, in her mind, said, this, is, this looks good. I need to just try it. Because she, she allowed the enemy to continually talk to her Amen. instead of saying to God, God, Father, do you know that this thing comes and talks to me every day and is telling me this or telling me that? Oh, you, no, 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 no. That's not how she, that's not how she rolls. She decided to uh, obey, uh, believe the enemy. Some of you today are obeying the enemy. The devil is a liar. We know what happened to them in the garden. They ate of the fruit, and what happened? They were cast out of the garden. Amen? Amen? To keep them away from the tree of life. Amen? Because if they had eaten of the tree of life, they would have been stuck in that forever. Amen? But by pushing them out, that was the mercy of God to push them out. You know, the garden. But God is so loving. Remember, we, we know about them, how they uh, made for themselves, what? Fig leaves to cover themselves. You know, if you want to cover yourself, why a fig leaf? That's all they had. So they used these fig leaves to try to cover themselves. And God shows up and says, Adam, where art thou? It's like God didn't know. You know when God comes and asks us questions? Sometimes when God comes to ask me a question, I know he already has an answer. I usually say, thou knowest, Lord. You know, Lord, so what am I supposed to know? Amen? Amen. Because whatever I say, I know that he has something greater. He has more insight about it. Amen? Amen. And so what happens is God, in his loving uh, kindness, he uh, killed an animal. Amen? It was the first death. An animal was killed, and skins were put on their backs for covering. Uh, because they were going to be sent out where there was weeds and thistles, storms, uh, all kind of things were going to happen. And so God put them out of, of the garden. But he's in love, he, he covered them. In love, he covered them. And even though they were out of his intimate presence, his presence was still there. His presence was still there. Because he had a purpose and he had a plan for this generation. He was going to send a Savior that was going to bring us all into freedom. Amen. We were going to be set free. The first man committed sin in the garden, but the second man, Jesus, came to set us free. Aren't you glad? I'm glad about it today. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't take it for granted. And so what happens to you sometimes is that, especially through this pandemic, uh, you start to feel, you get a spirit of what? Loneliness. Loneliness is a booger, because I have to tell the devil, I'm not lonely. Jesus said he'd never leave me or forsake me. I better look to Jesus, the author and finisher of my faith. And you come into boredom. Some of the stuff that, that I have that I had got myself into just because I was bored. The enemy wouldn't have had a foothold if I hadn't been bored. And you know, so, some of you, I know it's happened to you, because how did you get involved with that mess? You just had an opening. You were just bored. Just said, well, okay, let me go see what that's about. Stay home. Stay away from the devil. Amen? Amen. Or you went to, for, for an adventure. You opened yourself up to it. I love adventures. But I got to make sure those adventures are the Holy Spirit approved. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. And I'm in that place. You all know I told you a few weeks ago how the Holy Ghost put me in check. Amen? Because the closer I get to him and he, he loves me so much, he shall stop me. And thank God he will. Because who, those whom he loves, he chastises. Amen? He brings correction to them. And it's with love. It hurts. It hurts. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy that day. Was I passed away? I was not happy. But it got my attention. Amen? I had to make a change. Amen? And God was still covering me. He had a labor over here. Pastor Ray was over there, real close by. He came. My brother came. He was close by. They came. Even though I was out doing my own thing, God was still covering me. That was the love of God. That was the love of God. And I'm mad. I'm saying, well, look what happened. This woman. Girl, you could have lost your life out there. You could have been in real trouble out there. Amen? Just because you wandered out of the presence of God. No. Just because you wandered out of the of covering. I don't even want to say that this morning. 
because I cannot wander out of his presence because he's always Amen. present with me. Amen. But I've wandered into an alleyway that I shouldn't be with, it, be in. Amen? Amen? Knowing that he's there. God hates to be uh, dragged down alleys with us. Amen? Amen? We're not supposed to be there. Amen. We're supposed to be there. And sometimes he will correct you immediately. And sometimes he'll let you go all the way through that alley. And you'll find yourself in some trouble. And you'll say, God, help him. You didn't help me. He didn't tell you to go that way. Amen? Amen? You didn't ask him. Amen. And so those, those, those they just come in and they just come in looking for a place inside of you, open for adventure. And, and can I say to you too that during this pandemic there's been more drunkenness has gone on in the body of Christ. Didn't I read in the word where it said, do not become drunken? Amen. Can I tell you that if you're drunk and I'm in trouble at one o'clock in the morning and I call you and you're drunk, you can't even touch God for me. Amen. That's another spirit that's going to come out. Because we're called to be uh, uh, on, on post how often? 24-7. Amen? And so I'm saying to you this morning, come out from among them. Come out from among them. Is that alcohol more important than your relationship with God? I'm especially speaking to leaders this morning. Leaders, come on. Come on. God is calling us to the the front line, amen? amen? And we cannot, we have to be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, Paul told us, don't be drunk with wine to, to excess, amen? But be what? Filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. And I mean, be filled with the Spirit if you don't have a mixture, amen? amen. Uh, uh, we've got uh, legal drugs right now. It's the same thing. Alcohol and, and drugs is pharmacia. It brings in other spirits, amen? It, 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 you see it things uh, differently. And sometimes you just have a drink uh, just because you just want to chill out. Or you just, it's been so tired. How come you didn't go rest in Jesus? Amen. How come you didn't go to the one who is your amen. rest? How come you didn't run to the one who is your peace? Because I can I say to you, if you start going every time you come home or every time you get stressed out, you run to that alcohol, can I tell you it's going to get you into trouble? It's going to get you, it's going to bite you. It's going to bite you. I'm saying this to you because I've seen it happen in my own family. Because if there's been some generational curses that have come down, and some of them see the devil and still want to play with him. And God said, excuse me, come out from among them and be ye separate. Amen? Amen. And so, and then what else? Is, you, uh, the enemy also brings in what? Hurt feelings. And some of you uh, get hurt in church. Somebody says something they're not supposed to say. Can I say to you, the devil will use whatever he can use to Amen. get to you. Amen? And so what happens? It draws you, draws you from the presence of God. That enemy just creeped in. And so you left church crying and weeping because of what the devil said. Because you look at it as it was flesh and blood. He already told us we're not fighting flesh and blood. Amen? There's principalities and powers and rulers in high places that have come to take you down. And he will use anybody that he can. Amen? Amen? You need to be able to say, like I have said, when certain people have come to attack me, and I said, boy, that hurt. That hurt. I mean, I had to feel it first. Oh, that was ugly. What, what, was, what the heck was that? Amen. What did they eat? Are they crazy? You know? Amen. But then, when I came down, I say, oh, I know who that, that was you, booger. You showed up, the devil, again, amen? You showed up to try to destroy me, to try to discourage me, because if my feelings are hurt, it's hard for me to be in that place of intimacy with the Lord. I'm always nursing this thing, oh, I can't trust people, and things are going up. Can I tell you, I've, I've been there, I've been there, can I tell you, I trust Jesus. I trust Jesus. I trust Jesus inside of people. Sometimes we expect too much of people. Can I tell you, they put on their pants one leg at a time, Amen. just like we do. Amen. They are flesh and blood. They're subject to make mistakes. Amen? Amen? They are subject to act crazy if they haven't been in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's like with uh, some people that I know, and they know who they are, that when they start acting crazy, especially in the morning time, I have to say to them, you need to go read your Bible. 
you need to go back and get with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Because it's like you've gotten up on the wrong side. And you came to spread that thing. I ain't eating that today. Amen? Amen. Those hurt feelings. Those hurt feelings. The enemy, will, the enemy will come purposely to hurt you. So I'm saying to you this morning, if you're in that position, I just take authority over that in Jesus' name. Amen. Over those emotions that you are holding on to. The Lord said to forgive Forgive, let go, let go, let go. I'm calling Amen. for a cleansing on you this morning and so that you are able to come closer to the King of Kings. Your spirit or your mouth is no longer whining about what happened to you because of the pain. Yes, it hurt, but God is our healer and he restores us. Amen? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. And you all know what I have to say about mess. It wasn't about nothing. Because the devil just came to try to discourage. He just came. He's just messy. It wasn't about nothing. And how dare I keep looking at him? Every time that you entertain and have not let go of what somebody has done to you, that is an enemy spirit that you are entertaining. Because God puts the sin where? He puts your sin under the blood. Put their sin there too. Amen? Amen? Jesus, be like Jesus. Jesus said on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Boy, we have a hard time saying that sometimes, don't we? Amen? But if we're walking in obedience to him, we are compelled to do it. What makes me do it? Because I want to be close to him. Amen. I want to be close to him. I don't want there to be a breach in our relationship because I'm holding on to some bitterness and unforgiveness uh, because I've been hurt. Rejection, the spirit of rejection is a good one. Uh, they, didn't ex they don't love me. Uh, every time they always do things to me. Uh, you're always the victim in something. Can I tell you you're more than a conqueror? You are more than a conqueror. Maybe God didn't want you there. Maybe God didn't want you to be a part of that. And you're walking around, well, they did this and they did that. You better, you, you better settle that with the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? Don't allow the spirit of rejection to, to foster itself, to become a part of your personality. Amen? Because if it does, you're gonna, after a while, you're going to be rejecting God. You're going to be rejecting other people. God's going to send a prophet into your pathway, and you can't receive because you're still in that spirit of rejection. The enemy still has you in that vice. Let go so you can hear God. Amen? Amen. When the God has a word for me, I want to be able to hear it with clarity. I don't want what I'm going through, my emotions, to crowd the spirit of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm reminded to you that uh, when Jesus... Uh, when they came to get Jesus, it was time for him to go to the cross. It was Peter in the garden that cut off the soldier's ear because they came to get his Jesus. Jesus had to restore it, and they said, put your sword away. Because it, it had Amen. to be fulfilled, amen? Amen. amen? You could just become an enemy of God just because you don't know what's happening. Amen? amen. So I'm saying that what it looks like sometimes, that may not be what it is. Ask God. Ask God. It looks like this on the outside, but God has given us discernment, hasn't he? He's given us understanding. He's given us knowledge as his kids. And so we go back to him and we say, what's up with that? What was that? Is there something I'm supposed to know? Or is that something I'm just supposed to throw out and forget it? Amen? Amen. And then if I'm supposed to forget it, I always say, God, now purify my heart. Purify my heart. I allow you to cleanse me. Amen? So that I'm not carrying anything. I'm not carrying any weights because these things become like monkeys on our back. Amen? Because I've been rejected by this one. I've got hurt feelings over there. Uh, this happened to me and that happened to me. The travelers came and they were supposed to get out and they didn't leave when they were supposed to. They had a sad story about, well, you know, we ran out of money. Can I tell you, I can find some money to get you out. Amen? Amen. Amen? Because why? You're causing confusion. Amen? Around me or around us. I hope this is making sense to you this Amen. morning. I hope this is something for you to think of. But the Lord told me to tell you this. this, this. Uh, don't entertain familiar spirits. Walk in the spirit of God. Uh, make a, a, don't make verbal, a verbal commun co uh, commitment to walk with God. And don't let it just be verbal. Let it be a heart commitment. When you came to Jesus, did you say, I came just to see how this was, I hope it works? Or did you come totally committed to him? 
That's what, that's what salvation is. You can't be saved unless you totally commit to him. Amen? You cannot come halfway. Save my soul, but I'm going to go out there and do what I want to do. Amen? I don't think so. It don't work that way. He wants to be Savior and Lord. If he can't be Savior, if he can't be Lord of, of all, he don't want to be Lord. He can't be Lord of all. Amen? Because he's calling for our whole hearts, isn't he? And so I'm reminded this morning about the rich young ruler. He really wanted Jesus. He wanted eternal life. Amen? But he couldn't let go of his riches. And today, you might say, well, I don't have too much money. I don't care if it's a tin can and you're holding on to it. And it's in the, in the way of Jesus. That's one of your riches. Amen? Amen? Or a habit that you have. Amen. That you say, well, this is just me. It ain't you. You were made in the image of God. Amen. Kick the devil out. Amen? Everything in me that's not like Jesus, he's come to do what? Restore me back to the Father. Amen? Amen. Cause me to be just like him. I can't give you any excuse for a temper. No, 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 no. There's a little girl who say, no, 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 no. I have no excuse for a temper because I had a temper tantrum. Because I'm supposed to be filled with what? The Spirit of God. Amen. And everything that's in me is going to come out. Amen? Amen? If you got cursing and un you got junk in you, it's going to come out. Amen? When you Amen. least expect it. And because you're a child of God, later you're going to be there crying, telling her, I'm so sorry I said that to you. I'm so sorry I did. You've already done the damage. Amen? Amen? You've already cut them, you know, and then you've gone back and they have to get healed. They're getting healed and you're coming to that place. You didn't have to go there in Jesus' name. Amen? Walk with Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Hold that tongue, that unruly member. Amen? Because it gives place to the enemy. If you allow the devil to speak through you once, he's coming back to do it again. Amen? Because he doesn't come just to, just to play for a while. He comes to do what? Take over. Take over. It, it's like uh, I was told that if you let the devil ride, he'll kick you out so he can drive. Amen? Amen? He will kick you out to take authority over all that you are and the things that God has given to you. Amen? And so the rich young ruler, he wanted eternal life like we all do, don't we? Amen? I tell people, look, you buy, you buy insurance for everything else. You buy auto insurance. If you're a homeowner, you buy homeowner's insurance. You And you buy life insurance. Listen, you better get some eternal life insurance. Amen? That you know where you're going. Amen? Uh, don't get you can't get to the end of life and didn't prepare, did not prepare to live with Jesus. You, we Amen. have to accept Him now. Amen? Amen. You can't play with this. Can't play with it. Two people are going out into eternity, no insurance. When I leave from here, I'm assured where I'm going. Amen? Because I got I got the document. Amen? Amen? I got Him in my heart. Amen? Amen? He walks with me and He talks with me, and He ain't going to hell. Amen? He no 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 no. no. Okay, and so, uh, so, so the only way to have a, a a relationship with Jesus is to give up everything else. Amen. Give up everything else. Give it to Jesus. Right? He's not going to withhold any good thing from you. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health, even as your soul prospers. Amen. He's just bringing right order into your life. Some of you have been in jobs you weren't supposed to be in. And it's making you exhausted. It's making you tired. Uh, you're not prospering the way that you want to because you didn't ask Jesus, is this the place I'm supposed to be? Amen? And, and it's killing you. Some people are dying premature deaths. You know, just wear it out because they weren't supposed to be in that job. They weren't supposed to be in that place. Amen? It pays for us to do what? Talk to Jesus. Ask Jesus. Amen? And so when we come to God, we have to we come renouncing the world system, don't we? We come renouncing the world system. We got so much stuff going on right now. If you don't know God, you're going to be totally confused. I've noticed that when I go to the bank or whatever to use the computer, nine times out of ten, they don't change that thing again. Amen? If I go to the store, five times out of ten, they don't change. I'm supposed to put that ATM card in there or whatever. Changes are happening in the world. So if changes are happening in the world, you know there's stuff happening in the heavenlies. 
You know that. Amen. And we're getting closer to the coming of the Lord. Amen. So it's important for you and I not to get so caught up in the things of the world. We saw, we saw during that time of the election, excuse me, that people came out and stuff came out of them. And they said they were Christians. No, 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 no. They didn't look like Jesus today. Amen. Because he, because he said, uh, he said, don't judge them, but you'll sure know them by their fruit. Amen. Everybody who says, Lord, Lord, they ain't going to enter. Amen. So just because someone says, I'm saved and I'm a Christian, you better check it out. You better check it out. You have discernment. Amen. So he's, we're called to do what? Amen. Renounce the world. Amen. Come and be what? Washed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Uh, baptism. Uh, when you were baptized and you went down into the water, it was symbolic of you do, doing what? Dying to sin. Dying to the world system. And when you came up out of that water, you came up to a resurrected Lord. You came up to a resurrected life. Amen? Amen. So what you took down in that water was not supposed to show up again. If you went down as a liar, you are not supposed to come out and continue to be a liar. Amen? Something has to change. The closer you walk with Jesus, he begins to purify you. He begins to heal you. Uh, he begins to do what? Make you better than new. Amen? Thank you, Lord. And we're not a victim. We're not a victim. In the world, we were victims to the enemy. But God came to make us what? More than conquerors. No matter what's going on in our spirit, we can make it. Amen? And so the, the Lord was saying, be careful uh, that... Uh, that you don't let the enemy just charm you into things. Amen? He'll just come just as sweet. He'll say, oh, you need to be a part of our ministry, and you need to do this, and you need to do that. If God didn't say it, watch your spirit. Watch your spirit. Maybe you are maybe you are participating in something that God didn't tell you to do. That. Amen? It's a, I've learned there are good things, but it's not God things. You know? And the older we get in the spirit, let's put it like this, the more, I hate the word older, so the more mature, the more Amen. mature that we get in the spirit, things are supposed to change. Amen. We're, we're just supposed to be a little bit wiser. Amen. 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 We're not supposed to be walking around like little kids, right? Amen. Whining. You know, when I see little kids whining, I always say, Lord, do I do that? Do I do that? Do I sound like that sometimes? You know, before I say to that child, what's the problem? Tell me what the problem is. Can, can we take care of this? Amen. I'm looking for a solution to shut that noise down, you know. And, and it's like us. God does not want to hear our whining coming back with the same thing over and over again. Well, God, you know they did this to me. You know they did that to me. And you know how hurt I am. He's your healer. Amen. He's your healer. Fall into his arms. He heals. He restores. I've had terrible things done to me. I've had family rejection. Maybe you know I had a major family rejection. Can I tell you, it wasn't about nothing. It wasn't about nothing because God loves me and God takes care of me and he restores and he makes everything new. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. So that's part of what he told me to directly uh, say to you this morning. And so, okay, back to the message. So we know he told us not to become unequally yoked. And he's called us to where? The secret place. We're back at that again. Are you dwelling in the secret place? Are you dwelling in the place of the Most High? That's Psalms 91, verses 1 through 5. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The problem is with us sometimes that we go to visit the secret place, but we're not living there. We're not abiding under his pinions. We're not abiding in him. We, uh, sometimes we step out because we're going to do something we know we're not supposed to. Amen? And we just go out and do our little sin or whatever. And then we come back and we smile at God. Say, Jesus, I love you. Traitor. <laughs> you know, liar. Amen. Amen. Because the Bible says if we love him, we'll do what? Keep his commandments. Amen. 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 Church. Amen. I, I'm not making excuses <laughs> for us anymore. Amen. Uh, somebody said, well, I just did. I just, I just made a mistake. Yes, it was a sin. It was just a sin. Let's call it for what it Amen. is. Amen. The Bible never talks about a mistake. It talks about sin and transgression. Amen? Amen. So, and so, and for me to be purified, I have to confess my sin first so that he can 
do what? Heal me, right? Cleanse me from all unrighteousness, amen? Uh, it says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Don't look for uh, 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 security outside of God. He is, he is, he is. He has become our refuge. He's become our high tower. My God and him will I trust. Do we trust him today? Do we trust him today? I, I have those times where almost every day I say, God, help my unbelief. If there's anything in my spirit that's an anti-spirit uh, against you, God, help my, un my unbelief. Purify me, purify me. Amen? Because if I'm not walking in that place of cleanliness before God, he's saying a whole lot of stuff that I'm missing. Amen? He's trying to do things for, for me, and he can't do it because why? Because of that speck, no, that beam that's in my eye. Amen? That I haven't taken care of. But I can sure tell you about the speck that's in yours. Amen? That's too easy because we, we walk in that place of being what? Self-righteous. Amen? And that ain't God. Amen? Amen. Uh, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His trust shall be thy shield and buckler. Oh, that's going to protect me just by my uh, just by my trusting him. He's going to be my shield, and he's going to be my buckler. He's going to protect me from the evil one. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that, fly, uh, that flieth in the day. Why? Because when the enemy shows up, I say, I'm with Jesus. I'm with Jesus. Amen? Talk to Jesus. Amen? I want, and, and so with this, I want you, we talked about that secret place, but I want you to consider uh, uh, the Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon, or in the Bible, it's also called the Song of, uh, the Song of Songs. And it is considered uh, to be the holiest of the, of the, of the holies of the, of the Jewish scriptures. They said, oh, that's, that's the most holy. That's the most holy. Why? Because it speaks of intimacy. It speaks of God and his love for his church. We tried to make that allegory and that uh, a metaphorical uh, 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 message and the description and all of that. We tried to make it other things. But that's about God and his church. God and his people. About his relationship with them. God loves his children, doesn't he? Amen. And so God's entire purpose uh, in describing, uh, uh, giving us very uh, clerical and intimate details in that was just to show you how entwined, how he is with the children of Israel. He knows everything about you. He knows everything about you. Remember when they were in the garden and uh, uh, when they sinned? What were they covering up? Their nakedness? And like God had already made them and they're going to cover, what was they going to cover from God he hadn't already seen? Amen. He's the creator! Amen? Amen. And so sometimes we try to hide from God, don't we? We just say all the right things. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We come with a religious spirit of what that is. Amen. God knows the difference. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And so what happens in the Song of Songs, I want you to uh, study this, this verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 14. It says, Oh, my dove, here in the cleft of the rock, the sheltered in the secret place, of the steep pathway. Let me see your face. Let me hear your voice. For your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. It typifies us of being converted to him. Of being converted uh, to the Lord. Something happens to us. Uh, we, Our spirits become like that dove-like spirit. Uh, doves are relational. They're relational. Uh, it's, often when you see one dove, there's going to be another dove close by. Because they are relational. Amen? And we remember that when Jesus was baptized, what happened? What happened when he came up out of the water? What happened? A spirit of the Lord came. A spirit of God showed up uh, in, in the form of a dove and said what? This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. When there, when, let's just go back to Noah with the flood. Remember when he sent the birds out? Amen? And one of them was that dove. You know, and he knew uh, when, the, when the ground was dry, when they could go out. Amen? And so metaphorically, it's going to be used in the scripture. And we're supposed to have dove-like spirits. Gentle. They're gentle birds. Amen? And so we know that uh, God had called us to the secret place in 
Psalms 91. But here in this, in this verse, he's calling us to another realm of the secret place. That is in, some of your Bibles say, into the stairwell. In, in, where my text says, into that new pathway. There's a pathway there. And, and what I learned about that, that in the cleft of the rock, uh, the, uh, the birds go to hide, hide from the, from the eagle, from the eagle, from the vultures that have come to try to kill them. Amen? They may be in the cleft of the rock, but you better get into the cleft. I mean, you better get into the stairwell. There is more covering there. Amen? And so what he's saying that, and, 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 she, and she's there. Church, we're there. And we're there. And, he, and what does he say to her? Let me hear your voice. Let me see your face. God is saying to us, let me see you this morning. Let me see your worship. I love your voice. I love your face. Oh, when you look at me, I love your face. When you look up instead of looking down, I see you. I see you. I can bless you. Amen? Instead of looking down, look up, look up, look up. So the message is, is to God, uh, to his church, of saying, I love you, and I have protected you. I have purposely placed you in a place for your protection. Why would you leave the secret place to wander out there in the streets? Amen? Uh, where cars can run you over. Amen? Amen. Where people are shooting. You know, in our world, a whole lot of stuff is going on. You know? And so we know as saints of God that we better be covered by the blood, right? And we better live in where? The secret place. Amen? And another, another verse I love in Song of Solomon is, is uh, verse 7 of chapter 4, where the Lord says, Oh, my love, you are altogether beautiful and fair. There is no flaw or blemish in you. And that's how Jesus sees us. He sees us flawless, flawless, because he's covered us, hasn't he? I love Jesus. He's there doing what? Making intercession for us. He sits at the right hand of the Father, and the Bible says he's ever making intercession for us. That's my kid. That's my daughter. That's my kid. I mean, I look like it right now, but that's mine. That's mine. Amen? Amen. So as the bride of Christ, I'm winding this down because of the time, as the bride of Christ, there's supposed to be what? A magnetic pull inside of us, embedded in our spirits, that when we sort of wander away, it pulls us back to the presence of God. Amen? Amen? Because the enemy also has a magnetic pull. He's trying to pull you into the world. Amen? 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 He's doing everything that he can to bring you into that place of what? Death and destruction. But when I walked with Jesus, and when I began to worship him, that magnetic pull brings me even to a higher place. It brings me closer to him. Oh, I'm enriched by his presence. There's such joy there. The enemy doesn't want me to know about that. Amen? Because it, 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 it releases his foothold where he's trying to get it in my life. Amen? And so if you're not having a magnetic pull uh, in your spirit, you better get back to God because it brings an alignment. Uh, I, people say to me, you know, it sure is hard to be a Christian. When you fall in love with Jesus, it ain't hard. It ain't hard. It's a matter of love. Uh, when, when a man and a woman get married uh, and they love each other, it's a magnetic pull. Amen. Amen? When she's away from him or he's away from her, they're talking about each other. Amen? Amen. To other people. People say, do you have anything else to say that about your husband Amen. or your wife or whatever? They can't help it. It's a magnetic pull. So what about us in the spirit? There should be that magnetic pull that just pulls us back to Jesus. I don't care what you do or what you say. Jesus got me. Jesus got me. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And so... Uh, and, and we know that nobody comes to God unless the Spirit draws them. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so that, that, that magnetic pull is what? The Holy Spirit drawing us. He woos us back in, doesn't he? Uh, John 6, 44. You can look that up because of our time. And I want to say to you this morning, there's no other way to be saved except through Jesus. Amen? Amen. You've got to come through the door. Amen? Amen. Uh, the world is telling you there's many ways to God. The, God, to God. The devil is a liar. Amen. He's a liar. There is no other way Amen. but through Jesus. Read the word. Read the word. Like I said to you earlier, the enemy will do everything to keep you out of the word from you knowing the truth. Amen? Get to Bible studies. Get to Bible studies where you can grow in the word. Amen? 
In times past, God winked at our sins, but now he's commanded us and all men everywhere to do what? Repent. Repent. Just come on. Come to God. Come on. And so we need to know this morning that we are the bride, absolutely loved by God. Amen. Absolutely loved by God. Well, I don't think anybody loves me. You are absolutely loved by God. And it's time for us to start walking that way, isn't it? Amen. Thank you, Lord. And, as, and if, if we're absolutely loved by him, we need to absolutely love him. Amen. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. All, all, all of you, everything that's in you, love God. Amen? Amen? Sometimes we love God with our spirit, but our mind ain't there. Amen? We've got some other things that we're going to do. Amen? It's a mixture. You ain't in love. Baby, because when you're in love, all you can see is Jesus. Father. Amen? There's something about you walking in the Holy Ghost. Amen? And, and he gave us the Holy Ghost as our what? Our keeper. Amen? And to... Bring us to Jesus, amen? To show us the way, amen? And so that why, that's how we stay there. The life of a Christian is a life of prayer, amen? And what is prayer? Just talking to God. I'm, I'm wrapping this up just because of time. It's a life of prayer. What is prayer? Just talking to God. You know, I talk to God 24-7. I'm going to get in my car today and I'm going to say, God, how'd that do? Amen? Other people might say, oh, that was good. That was good. I'm going to say, Jesus, what happened? How did I do? Because I'm in relationship with him. And he says I'm supposed to be in constant conversation with him. Amen? And whatever I do, so people say, well, you don't have to ask God about that. You have to ask God about that. You need to ask him about something. Amen? Before you do it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen? Because he's a lover of our souls. And he's trying to keep us. Jesus came to this world and he knows about the human life. Amen? And so he knows how to keep us. Amen? I'm saying to you this morning, if you heard this word and you know that you need to um, improve your serve uh, in your relationship with God, just do it. Just do it. Uh, just come back to God. Amen? We've been walking with God long enough to know that he loves us. He forgives us of, of all of our sins. There's no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. That's a hook. That's a hook. You've got to walk after the spirit. So easy for us. There's no condemnation to those that, that are in Christ. You ain't in Christ Jesus if you're not walking after the Spirit. Amen. Amen? Don't fool yourself. And to those of you that don't know Jesus, oh, you need to get to know Jesus. He Amen. is the lover of our souls. You can read about him. You can hear about him. But until you make a commitment to him, that's, the, that's when you begin to know Amen. him. Oh, and it's so intimate because what happens? He changes your heart. He changes your spirit. And so you begin to see things that the natural man can't see and the natural man can't do. So I'm inviting you this morning to say, Jesus, come into my heart. I'm, I'm tired of this world. Jesus, Jesus. You said all I have to do is call on your name. Call on you because you're faithful and just to forgive me of all of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, thank you because you're teaching me how to, and you will teach me how to walk with you. You will teach me to have uh, this, this relationship that I heard uh, this pastor speak about today, and I've heard other people speak about. You'll teach me. My relationship with you will not be uh, based on their relationship. I've got to have a personal relationship Amen. with you. And so, Jesus, I just ask you to come in. I ask you to come in and just take over. And I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you called me, you called me, you predestined me to be your child. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So church this morning, I want to encourage you that if, if Agape community, uh, community Fellowship, if we've encouraged you or, or said something that blessed you, we want to encourage you to be a part of this ministry. We want to encourage you to sow seeds here. Amen. amen. And, and we have uh, so three ways to do that. You can give with give with fly. Give the five. Uh, you can do it through uh, www.agapecommunityfellowship.com. Man, or you can give through Zelle, through your bank, right? From your smartphone. Uh, click and send the money through Zelle. Uh, when the search window comes up, it's Agape Community Fellowship. And the email is agape, the number four, us at yahoo.com. I didn't really spell this out for you. A-G-A-P-E 
I N T for us at yahoo.com. And the third way is to give by mail. It still works. Send your check or money order to Agape Community Fellowship, Post Office Box 1222, Pomona, California. Now the scripture does tell us to give, and it shall be given unto us, doesn't it? He says that, and they will pour into your lap a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you in return. And that's from the New American Standard Bible, uh, Luke 6, 38. So I, I want to encourage you this morning to be a part of what God's doing. Be excited about Jesus. Amen?